Oh yeah. What is up, everybody? Thank you so much for joining me. Good. Super excited. You read the title. You know what we're going to talk about. I hope you're excited about this. You guys are champions, man. Do you have an aroma miser? Just saying, bro. Just saying. If you're looking to cover up that ugly nipple on top of that thing, Mink Machine, dude, hit him up on Facebook. DM him. Tell him I sent you, dude. I'll put a link in the description to Mink, for sure. Let's do this. Let's just jump right on in, man. Here we go. No! Come on. Pugio? Pugio? What is this guy? Nice packaging box. Uh, Puyo RDA, the what did I say? The first adjustable bottom airflow intake system. Yeah, I've never seen anything like it, so it's pretty cool. I don't know, man. So again, it's just a box. High on USA. We got the label. We're gonna pull this off. This was cut, wrapped in a rubber band, but it's gone now. We no need for it really. This flaps open to pull this out. Put top on that, put that up to the side. And then no! Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. No, it's that's it, man. It's got a light on top there, see? Very cool. Very neat. O-ring does not come with it. We'll talk about that quite a bit later. Pop this out. You don't get any extras with this. No screws. No nothing. That's it. Minus the O-ring, you don't even get that, okay? So, this is some I had laying around because I always save my O-rings from other devices. Always. Put them all in a Ziploc you never know when they'll come in handy. Let's bring it down. We're going to completely dissect the Pugio RDA, by the way. We're going to completely dissect the whole thing down. Um, completely. 22 mil. 450 degree heat resistant drip top. Copper 510, made in the USA, patent pending. VIP 671 Pugio, Hyon USA. Hyon's really, uh, really makes really good products. The Pi 2, I've really been enjoying it. Uh, we're going to be reviewing that as well. I'll put a link in the description where you can get a Pugio. In case you're looking for one and you can see how that's not really sitting flush let's go man let's get it top from, from top to bottom pop the drip top I'm gonna show you this rounded on the inside single o-ring uh, I really like this kind of shape when you put your lips around it um, it's just really comfortable that they kind of angled that there I really like that the bore of this very very generous and I believe that with the airflow given, this matches up beautifully with this. I mean, you can either go in on this thing or just take it nice and easy. In my opinion, these two airflow, the airflow and the drip tip size are married perfectly, in my opinion. Very nicely done here. And it's really cool, man. Nice, nice heat resistant. The barrel, we're going to go ahead and just unthread it. It's not reverse threaded. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Oh, my brain's fried after this week at work. Barrel, nice and thick, heavily brushed. Look at that. Isn't that great, man? It's beautiful. Love that look. Nice threading all throughout. As far as threading goes, beautiful threading on this thing. Just cleaned it. Now, one problem with the barrel I do have is if you can see this, if I can get it in the shot, see that? That edge right there? It's very sharp, man. I could go like this, and I bet I could cut myself with that. Easy fix for me, though, and that's why this doesn't sit flush on there. Very positive click feel to it, but see how it doesn't sit all the way down? 
So I'm just going to take a little file of that. I wanted to leave it for the review for the purposes of the review. I wanted to leave that just so you guys, you know, knew it was there. That's what I got on mine. Awesome. Put that aside. The deck, the star of the show here. That's what everybody wants to know about. Wow. I bet if you've never seen a Pugio, you're probably going, whoa. <laughs> I'm going to take out this top one here. Uh, just to show you something. Uh, again, keep a close eye on these. They don't give you extras. Now, the center one is a bit longer than the ground ones. The ground ones are quite a bit shorter than this one. I'm not going to take out the ground ones. i um, just going to take out this center one to show you this. Flat on flat, trapping your wire. Flat on flat. Check out the center there. Get a little closer. Flat on flat, baby. Check that out. Isn't that great? You can see where my wire's been getting trapped on there. Right on that copper 510. Let me open up these negatives all the way. Uh, I think a problem some people might have out there if you order a Pugio, uh, make sure you got a nice small sized thin bladed flathead micro screwdriver or else you won't get it in there. But I want to show you this wide open. There we go. Huge. U shaped negatives, U shaped positive Ultim insulators and there's that adjustable airflow. I want to give you a really good look at this because we're going to dissect it. Nice smooth threading. There's a better look at that engraving if you will. So let's get into it. I mean the well's not too big. Not too big at all. And I'll show you how I've been wicking mine. It does have the raised airflow, as you can see. Um, I'll show you how I've been wicking mine. I've had really good results. You know, square it off. You know, stop sign. Oh, the name escapes me. Hexagon. Uh, shaped center post. You know, to prevent spinning. And as you can see, if you really look closely here, mine's a little off center. But I'm okay with that. One of the things they talk about, high end talks about a lot, um, as far as advertisement goes, is that you can take this, pull it, you can move your center post, you can spin it to accommodate different builds and, and such like that. Which is cool. Just unscrew the bottom, turn it, lock it back into place. One last look here. Uh, another really good design on their part is having this guy here. I'm going to grab a pointer. This guy here is a lot thicker than this guy here. This needs to be thick to withstand the tightening of this one. Right? Well, th this is really good at on them. Nice and thin here, thick here. Smart. Really smart. I'm going to go ahead and leave these unthreaded because obviously we're going to build it. Now, looking at this, I mean, can you imagine? I mean, Doing continuous builds with this is a breeze, man. Total breeze. No problem. So you don't have to eyelet to thread it through. You just drop it in. Let me put in this because I don't want to lose it. Oh, by the way, on the bottom, look how flat these screws are. Look at that. Beautiful, man. Just gorgeous on that. Top three eddies I've ever used. Easily. One of my favorites. It's used daily. Let's write that down. Let's get to things. Let's take. Let's start taking this thing apart. I'm gonna take out the 510 copper pin here. I'm gonna try and keep everything in shot. Pops right out. I'm gonna show you every little piece of this. Especially, you've been thinking about buying one. Nice long thick copper pin. Here's your center post. As I was showing you before, and there's that ultimate insulator once again. Nicely made, right? Not bad, not bad at all. The other side. Now you're gonna need a pair of tweezers to get this bottom ring off right here. Right here. 
use this as your tool. It's got two notches in it. Stick it in the notches. Twist it. Just like that. And I'm just going to sit here and, and just, just till I can get my finger kind of on it. And I'm just going to take my time here. Again, threading nice and smooth. As you can see right there. There's the lock ring. I've always tried with my channel, if I can, to show every piece of every little thing that I possibly can of these products. Because I'm not a salesman, man. <clears throat> you know, but hopefully it'll help you make up your mind as far as purchases go, you know? If you've been thinking about it, at least you get a good look of everything before you make that big decision, man. Because you work hard for your money, dude. You know, 150 bucks is nothing to kind of, you know, you know, look away at. I mean, that's a lot of money, right? So this is an investment. Hopefully I can help you make sure. O-ring holding it on, just sits in there in the groove. In fact, I'll pull that off and just show you the groove. There's the raised airflow holes. Nice work, right? Beautiful, man. Very well done. On the bottom, something interesting, and I wanted to show you guys this. On the bottom it says... Um... Micro anti cloning registration, and it also says F U C maybe 1746. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, F U C, right? Or is that a P U G 1765? I don't know, man. I'm just I, I can barely read it, but I can definitely read that micro anti cloning registration. I can definitely read that. I'm gonna set that off the side. I think you got a good look at that. Interesting, right? I mean, is that really a thing? I don't know. Another ultimate insulator on the bottom, really protecting that copper pin from touching any part um, of the wall here to really prevent shorting. Um, massive short if that happens. Ultum, another O ring holding on that bottom section, which, you know, I've never had any leaking from the top section to the, through the bottom section. It's really sealed off nicely threading nice and clean here and on the top beautiful let's put it together man first up pop this in and I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that that ring sitting a little better there there we go kind of give it a little like a little rocking or really seated in there And I'm going to thread this on. I'm going to try to keep everything in shot here. Best I can. So, what they mean by adjusting your airflow is you can just... You can put it here, 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 anywhere you want in that vicinity. And wherever you want it. You just lock down this ring. So I'm just gonna put it in the middle for now. Maybe just a little off. Yeah, just a hair off. And then I'm gonna tighten it down. Nice and snug here. Just like that. Definitely get it nice and snug. Next up is the center post block, if you will. And I want it dead center. I'm not gonna rock it on this one to the side, you know, you can do it like this, which if you do do it like this, man, it really centers up your coils, but I'm just going to go dead straight on here, boom, just like that, and the pin, and just thread it up. What I like about the Pugio is you can completely take it apart and really clean it. Something to always keep in mind when you're messing with 510 pins on any Addy, especially if they're copper, you don't want to over tighten them. Nice and snug is the key here. Good. That's great. And there it is. Back to normal. Let's build it. What do you say? Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah.
on, getting us comfortable 24 gauge Nichrome 80. And we're gonna go eight reps per side. That's good. That's pretty good right there, isn't it? Yeah. Get a little closer. There we go. Let's do it. 24 gauge Nichrome 80. Eight reps per side. I was gonna do a continuous build for this video, but we're gonna keep it nice and simple. I was trying to keep it as simple as possible. A wraps micro coil. Nice and tight. Always wrap it around nice and tight, whatever you're wrapping it around. Nice and tight as you can get it around that bit. You want a nice even roundness with your coils. You're gonna get better performance out of them that way. You really are. Clip up any scraggler ends, and I like to, I like longer leads uh, versus some people really like them really short, and I like a really big lead. So put that a little more centered. Do another eight, and I'll show you the coil. Eight, pull it nice and tight. Clip the scragglers here. Straighten out the lead. I feel like that's pretty tight around there. Yeah, it's not bad. That one probably could go a little tighter. And I just, I just use some some pliers and really tug down on those leads. That's good. We can start, man. What I'm dealing with. Jeez, How much coffee today, Trevor? There we go. Let's do it. So, lead in, we're just going to drop this one off to hang out for a minute while it's buddy comes over. And we'll just do one at a time. So, remember I'm going to push these over because I want to center it. So as you can see in the spacing I'm using here, I'm pretty much the coil sitting on the corner of the airflow hole. See that? And that's kind of how I gauge where I want it. And I'm going to go ahead and tighten down the negative first. And I think we're going to get away with not having to use the tool. Nope, I'm going to put it in there. I want to be sure. I want to be sure. Tie it up just like that. And it couldn't be easier. It really couldn't. Flat on flat. It's the only way to go these days, man. <clears throat> That's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. I can actually go ahead and clip this now. Next up, next coil, one at a time. I want, best I can, if I can, is I want my, do you see how they're laying next to the lead, the, in the center post, the, my leads are laying right next to each other, do you see that? Maybe it'll come into play here. There we go. See how they're laying next to each other? I'm going to try and keep it like that. Just like that. The whole time. I'm going to try. It's never going to be perfect, but sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But I'm going to do, do the negative, just like the other side first, before I do anything else. Sometimes you have to use your thumb to kind of hold the, the, uh, the wire up. Because it is slightly elevated. That's pretty good. Maybe down a little bit more. There we go. Again, it couldn't be easier to build this thing. And I'm going to clip it. With flat on flat, you know, especially with like a, with tanks, I'd really like to see us using this style of trapping our wire. Like, I really would like to see these just be the regular. Flat on flat. And we can go ahead and just tighten up the center one now. Everything seems like, yep, everything's on the up and up here. And just nice and easy. Center post moved a little bit. I might have to go in there and tighten up that bottom. It did move just a hair. So when I'm measuring this, yeah, that's good. 
I don't know if it came out on camera or not, but uh, definitely going to go in there. So I went ahead and I pulled up my lead. See how it's kind of in the post right there? I'm going to do the same on both sides, and I'm going to clip it right at the top. That. Just like that. So that's what we're kind of sitting with right now. Everything's kind of where it needs to be, but now we got to do some centering. So let's do that now. So here I go. I got it in there, my tool, and I'm just going to use this to center it. Just nice and easy. It's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Same on this side. And then after I do this, I am actually going to come back through. And one more little snug on my negatives. Feels great. Minimal work here. So, rough rough cut here. I think our airflow hole is going to be just fine. I mean, I could move it, but I don't think I need to. I think we're going to be okay here. You know, just above it, both sides. Yeah, that's okay. So now I'm going to actually... Tighten up my bottom 510 pin and then um, do a little more adjustments. So I'll just come off camera here. Make sure that's all in the up and up. It's good. Okay, that should be a little better. So now I can really do my adjustments here. I'm going to go lift this up just a hair. Because you don't want anything touching the base. It shouldn't be touching at all. Pull this off the stand. So I can really get a good look at it here. Yeah, that one needs to come up. I'm really happy with that. So they're both about the same height. As well as the same distance from the center. Um, it's not going to be touching the wall or anything. The airflow holes are right below the coil. I'm happy with that. We can measure this. Yeah, we can measure it. Oh. Let's measure it out. drop it on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Let me check my coils. Yep. 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 Go right on the coil. That's good. Make sure nice and level here. You're just basically mimicking. Whatever you do on one side, you do on the other. We're sending a point two right now, and after we fire it, the resistance going is going to rest a little and, and really come to its true probably probably point three point four ish thirty amp or greater batteries. I always recommend that. And let's fire it up. I got some ceramic tweezers. Something you don't want to use here is metal. You know, that's just something you just don't want to use here. Only I'll try and keep this in the shot. There we go. Metal, no good. You're going to create a short, you're going to pop your coil. Ceramic, if you're going to do this, these techniques. Right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to pulse it, take my time here, especially at first, and you're going to see some pretty, see that? That just shows you the conduction of this atomizer. It's just so conductive, dude. Like, Rarely do you see that. I mean, already. Look at that. So, I'm going to come through. I'm going to pulse it. Nudge it. Nudge it. Nudge it. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. A couple times. One, two, three. And then I'm going to strum it out. This one came a little loose on me. these out while well, trying to keep it in the shot. Yeah, there we go. It's 
pretty good. I'm happy with that. That's pretty good. Nothing's touching. Nice height above the coils. Decent spacing. Like, I'm happy with the spacing. That's going to be just fine for me. Take it off the mod. Now, do you remember that O-ring I was showing you? So, what happens with a bottom-fed device like this is I notice I'm getting a lot of um, condensation here from just kind of straggling vapor. And it'll create, it'll just get really wet here. So in order to protect my 510, which we all should be doing, we should all really keep that in mind, is I will take this, this all ring, and I'll put it on. I just, around the bottom here. Oops. Grab it. I'll just put it on there like this. It doesn't it doesn't keep it from going flush on the device or anything like that. You won't even notice it's there. But one thing it will do is no matter if I get a leak off this, because it's bottom airflow, remember, no juice will go into my 510. There we go. We'll set it up there. Good. And after we wick it, we're gonna measure it again and see where we're sitting, just to make sure we're sitting good. So I got some Muji Japanese cotton here, cotton pad. I'm gonna cut what I need. And I only peeled one side off of my cotton pads because my shipment that came in was, ooh, that one looks terrible. A coil, doesn't it? It's glowing nice though, so I'm gonna stick with it. Um, we're really thin pads, it was really squished. So. I have one side I peeled, the other side I left on. So with wicking, I'm going to slide that in, fill the resistance, and I'm going to tug on this side as I tug on this side as I pull through. Nice and snug there. Nice and snug. We're going to do the same thing again. There we go. It's a better view. Nice and snug, nice and fluffy. That's what I'm looking for. That's great. That's perfect. I'm really happy with that. So there's that. Clip it off about five mils off the deck here. On all of them. I got them all clipped here, and it's kind of like the freak show in a way. And I'm gonna go ahead and switch modes here. So I'm gonna hold it like this, and I got my pick here. Picks are always a good tool to have in the box, and I'm gonna take this side here, and I'm simply going to fold it back on itself. One's following the other, and I'm just letting it happen. I'm not forcing the situation. I'm just folding it back on itself. That's it. That's it. Let's do another one. So again, I'm just going to take it and just... A little at a time here. Just take your time with waking. This isn't a place to, you know, press, 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 press. Just let it happen. It'll happen. You know, definitely it's good to be patient when waking. It really is. You know, a lot of Instagrammers out there, right? You guys like to show off your builds and stuff? Yeah, take your time, man. Take your time. Be stoked. I know. Nice and fluffy, just like that. So, what am I gonna do with these? So I have these now. I have these now. So I'm going to lift up, and I'm gonna put it on to the top, just like that. 
and I'm going to use the space here and in between the U posts to hold the wick. I don't want it underneath, I want it completely off the deck, but I want to go ahead and do that. And sometimes I'll even wait till I get it wet because it, it can be kind of a pain. There we go. To get it to go down in, but just like that. There we go. And I'm, I'm literally just laying it on there. And I'm, and I'm using these kind of channels and gaps to use to hold the wick. And this is what I've been using, and I've had great results with this. Um, it really keeps the juice above the deck, you know, which really prevents it from leaking. And the whole time I'm doing this, I'm making sure I preserve this pocket right here. That pocket is super important, just like that. Now it's dry. When I wet it up, I'll make this look a little better. But I want to show you underneath here. See how it's off the deck on this side? It's off the deck here. That's all open space for, um, you know, runaway juice to sit. Everything gets soaked up. Comes down, you drip it in here. You don't have to look, you just drop it in there. It almost creates like a little bucket. Let's do the other one. Lift it up. It's a tough angle to do it at. You know, when you can just kind of sit down and do this, it's easy. But on camera, when I'm trying to keep it in the shot, it's a, it's a bit of a challenge, man. I love it, though. This is, I love doing videos and stuff like that. I wish I could do them more. I really do. More and more often. We got the serious tank coming up. Been really enjoying that one a lot. This one's going really well. Really well. I'm pulling the cotton right here off the coil. I don't want that. Anything interrupting that pocket. That pocket's crucial to good flavor and airflow. So that's what I have right now. One side still needs a little work. That's what we're dealing with. Let's do it. Let's get it juicy. Actually, I'm going to add to the barrel right now. The barrel goes on just right over the top and just thread it on. I use these notches for my thumb and finger to really tighten that sucker down. There we go. I'm going to look inside here because I felt like there's a little resistance. Oh, that's why. This side looks really good. This one. There we go. Definitely needs a little love. Yeah, give this a try, man. Like with the Kennedy, your Nixons, stuff like that. Give this a try. I think you might like it. It's worth a shot, you know? There it is. That's how I wick it. Nice distance from the barrel. Really happy about that. Let's get it juicy. I got some lucky from Expatio's Underground. And, and by the way, speaking of that O-ring, I'm gonna show you, exact, see it? You barely see it in there? Watch this. I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna take it, it's dry, right? I'm gonna add juice to both sides. I'm gonna fire it. It's gonna suck it right in. I'm gonna do that till we're pretty juicy. In here. No, everything looks pretty good actually. That really worked out well. I'm pulling cotton directly at the coil itself. Just making sure we've got the pocket preserved. Yeah, we're good. A little more juicy juice. 
top cap goes on. Just like that. I love that snap effect. Now, watch this. See what I mean? You can see where my o ring's sitting. You can see where that kind of, that's going to happen. It's going to build up down there. So this is a great way to protect it with the Pugio. Not every atomizer will accept that O-ring trick, but this one it will. But it really protects my 510, and that just peace of mind, dude. Peace of mind, bro. Let's take it back up. And as you can see, it sits flush all day. Cool, man. A lot of information. The wicking. The wicking technique I used quite interesting but like I said it's what I've been using and it's what's been working for me it doesn't hinder the airflow at all with this thing preserve the pocket though whatever you do preserve the pocket let's go flavor nice and juicy Um, the thing you're going to really notice with the Pugio is flavor, very pronounced flavor. The airflow, if you can hear it, uh, almost feel it through, through sound, it's very smooth, very lazy feeling, at the same time you can really, you know, but really this is more flavor for me, it's more of a flavor addy for me. It's like the best of both worlds, you know. The build I showed you, very simple build, but, but to me, it shines in there. It's a great all-day build, you know, vape-style build, you know, great for flavor. And habit for me to look down in, but you could easily just, you know, whatever, just, you won't get any leaky, man. Not really, not much at all. This isn't the type of addy, you saw the deck, right? This isn't the type of addy you want to try and fill with juice and get as many hits as you can off of it. It's definitely not one of those type of atomizers. Um, what I do is I just, I've always been like this. I just drip just enough to get a couple hits out of it and I drip again. That's just how I've always been. But this one, man, um, definitely not one to fill. Not to fill, but it can hold quite a bit. For what it is. I mean, raised airflow, good idea, won't leak. Not much more I can say about it. The way you can take it all apart to clean it is a super bonus for me. That really sharp edge left on the barrel, to me, at that price point, I would expect not to see that. Uh, again, while it's an easy fix, I wanted to leave it for the video, man. Not much more I can say about it. Comfort-wise, vaping it, super comfortable. Like I said, like this, I'm always going like this with it. Usually with most devices, I'm gonna, I end up having to kind of go like this. But with this one, comfortable right there, man. That's it, man. Link in the description if you want to pick one up. I want to say thank you to Riverwalk Vapors for allowing me to review this beautiful baby. Um, top three I've ever used. It's an amazing Addy. Um, and it's highly recommended. If it's in your range, dude, I highly recommend it if you've been thinking about it. That price range, though, definitely would like to see that sharp slicey slice gone. Slicey slice. Thank you so much for watching, man. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at tjvapingreviews at aol.com or simply comment down below. I'll try and get back to you, man. Let's end this. In classic form, man. Y'all are champions, dude. Don't ever forget it. Don't ever forget it, man. Let's go.
<laughs> See you guys. <laughs>